Hey C3 Church, welcome to November Fast. I'm so excited that we've set aside the entire month of November to prepare for a brand new year, 2021, so that no matter what we experience, we will take ground, all of it, that rightfully belongs to us. Now, if you haven't already registered or downloaded your prayer outline, be sure to do both using the links provided in this post. You're also gonna need a journal for this entire experience. So you can create a digital one or you can request a C3 journal the next time you're in one of our gatherings. We'll be using it for all of our assigned activities to record key verses from the Bible, as well as developing that prayer outline. And together compiled, these are gonna to help to actually build the, the tangible roadmap for our new year ahead. Now today our theme is entitled, The 411 of Fasting, so let's dive right in. You know, fasting appears frequently throughout the Bible. David fasted when his son was sick and dying in 2 Samuel chapter 12. Daniel fasted for an answer to prayer in Daniel chapter 10. And Jesus fasted as he began his ministry in Matthew chapter 4. These fasts, and really all Bible fasts, and our November fast have a couple of key components. Number one, fast set aside a specific amount of time, and they could be as short as a single meal or as long as 40 days. You know that we've set aside the next 30 for our fast. Secondly, these fasts cut back on some form of normal daily activity to make room to better focus on God. Jesus went up into the, uh, to the desert so that he could get away from the crowd. Moses set aside his responsibilities and went up onto the mountain to talk with God. And so for you and I, we're gonna take a look at our lives and pull out maybe a couple of activities that give us more space to spend with God. Maybe it's cutting back on social media, entertainment, watching TV, gaming. Maybe a hobby gets set aside for the next 30 days, but we're gonna be cutting back on some of our normal daily activities so that we can better focus on God. Thirdly, we're gonna make a dietary adjustment because all fasts include some change in diet. Some fasts actually switch to a healthier form of eating, while other fasts went a step further and cut out all solids and just relied on liquids. And then the big time fasters, they went without food and drink completely. I don't know what level you'll want to fast, but I ask you to consider some form of dietary change. The final component of all these fasts is they ultimately look to create a better future. And sometimes that would happen automatically. King Darius began a fast one evening because Daniel was thrown into a lion's den. And God supernaturally responded to his fast and closed the mouth of the lions. But some fasts are actually extended and they become the time and place where the people involved begin to lay out a roadmap for what lies ahead that leads to a better future. And that really is what November Fast is all about, taking the next 30 days to draw out that roadmap. And during that time, I'm going to emphasize a couple things that are really applicable to drawing out a roadmap. Number one, you need to recognize where you are starting from. I called up my grandfather one time years and years ago. I was in a different state, the middle of the night. It was snowing. I had never been where I was at. And I said, Grandpa, how do I get home? And he asked me a simple question, Steve, where are you? And I looked around, I could not tell him, I did not know where I was at. And he, he explained to me, if you can't tell me where you're at, I can't tell you how to get to, to where you need to go. And that's a real uh, fact, a truth that really applies to stepping out of this year into the next year. We need to take some time to look at where are we at? What are the circumstances of our life? How did we get in the situations they are? How did these things develop? And ultimately, where have we allowed God or kept God from functioning that has brought us to the spot we're at? After that, we're gonna take a look at where should we be? Looking forward to the future. What circumstances need to change? What do they need to look like? How do I need to change my actions or my outlook? And ultimately, how can I better position the Lord, so he functions as number one, the Lord of my life. Once we grab onto that, we're gonna to begin to formulate some plans on how to go from where we are to where we need to be. Some of that'll come right out of scripture. Others will be principles that we receive out of a teaching. 
In some cases, it'll be a revelation, something unexpected or supernatural, something that God is inviting us to do supernaturally unlocks a better future. Maybe he'll ask you to step out of the boat and begin to walk on water or deposit a brand new gift within you, giving you action steps that lead to that better future. The fourth thing that's gonna be emphasized as we talk about this is using the 30 days to receive power from God to be able to take those steps. A couple of activities for today as you look at your outline. I want you just to number one, commit to this next 30 days, okay? Second thing I want you to be able to do is to uh, set aside time on your calendar. Look over the next 30 days and mark out space to be able to participate in this plan. Thirdly, I want you to consider removing some things out of your normal daily activity that actually allow you to better focus on God. And finally, I'm gonna ask you to consider and commit to a change in diet during these 30 days. Be sure to record those commitments inside of your journal. And from there, you're going to go ahead and read out of the scripture out of Proverbs chapter 2, grabbing on to a couple scriptures that stand out to you, then stepping into your prayer journal and making some adjustments, personalizing it and praying on your Monday theme. When you're all done, don't forget to leave a comment below so we can all share in the conversation. Be sure and have a fantastic day.